On the last video, I introduced the idea of central dogma. In other words, that you are made of proteins, but the proteins come from the information store in DNA, and that the process of making proteins involves an intermediary messenger and builder molecule called RNA. There's actually several types of RNA which are involved in this process, which include transfer, messenger, and ribosomal RNA. But either way, RNA serves as the bridge that takes the information from DNA to transform it into proteins. And so there's basically two types of nucleic acids. You have DNA, which is the main frame that includes all the genes of your body organized into chromosomes. And then you have RNA. Now, each RNA is basically, um, in case of messenger RNA, a copy of one gene that's stored inside of DNA. So the DNA will have thousands of genes inside of it. Each RNA molecule is a copy of one single gene or one piece of the DNA. And then RNA is taken to the, to the cytoplasm where a different kind of RNA called transfer RNA picks up the right amino acid and puts it in the right place with the help of another type of RNA called ribosomal RNA. And we'll learn more about that when we do protein synthesis. But for now, I need you to understand there's two types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. Okay? Now, each of these nucleic acids will be made of three basic parts. And you see them here. They have that in common. They're made of a phosphate group. You see that in yellow. And then you have a pentose sugar. Uh, the DNA is slightly different from the, uh, the RNA. Notice that the RNA has an extra oxygen right here on the second carbon. All right, you see that there. All right, and then that's called ribose, while the DNA, because it's missing one of the oxygens, is called deoxy, missing an oxygen, ribose. And then you have a nitrogenous base. The bases in DNA are going to be A and G for purines, and the same ones are going to be in RNA, but for uh, the pyrimidines, you can have T and C on DNA or U and C on RNA. So there's another difference between the two that U replaces T for the nitrogenous basis of RNA. Also notice that DNA is double-stranded while RNA is single-stranded. DNA will have all your genes. RNA will have only a copy of one single gene. So those are the basics of the two types of nucleic acids. Let's talk about each of these pieces in more detail. First, the nucleotide has basic parts, the phosphate group. And the phosphate group is a high energy group that's, that is basically a phosphate surrounded by four oxygens and it's charged because it's not a complete electron cloud on these electron elements. And so it's very reactive, it's going to be involved in several reactions and connections between phosphate groups store a lot of energy. Remember the molecule ATP has three of these phosphate groups and the bond between the last two is the one that stores the most energy and it's actually the energy currency of the cell. DNA has exactly the same group in it. And we'll talk about a connection that exists between those two at the end of this video. You also have a pentose sugar. A pentose sugar because it's five carbons. Check it out. You have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So that's why it's called pent for penta. Five sides, like pentagon. Five sides. So there's five carbons in this molecule. And they're like organized like this. Now notice you start counting from the carbon that's further away from the connect. From here so that means it's going to be one two three four five so it means the carbon that's not the, the corner carbon is going to be the first one right that corner carbon that's not part of the ring is carbon five so the corner carbon further away from that is going to be the considered carbon one this is going to be important later so make sure you understand how to count the carbons in the sugar now uh, the sugar is going to be different in RNA versus DNA but we'll talk about that later you are also going to have nitrogenous bases and now this is basically the third component of a nucleotide and notice that in the bottom here you have the whole nucleotide where you get the, the phosphate group you attach to that the sugar and then you attach to that the base so this is the building block of a nucleic acid a nucleotide and it has the nucleotide has three parts a phosphate group which I showed you the pentose sugar which I showed you and the nitrogenous bases which I'm showing you why now now there are two types of nitrogenous bases you have purines and pyrimidines okay so you have you have thymine adenine cytosine guanine and then you have uracil so these are the five bases that will show up in nucleic acids let me talk about these bases in a little more detail all right so you're going to have on the DNA nucleotide you're gonna have the phosphate group the five carbon sugar, now notice that the, the, the carbon two does not have an oxygen bonded to it. It does not have an oxygen bonded to it. Okay, and then you have the nitrogenous base over there, which can be A, G, C, or T. It can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine for DNA. Okay, and we're going to talk about those bases later in a second, okay? And then on the RNA molecule, again, you're going to have the, the phosphate group, 
again, you're going to have the five carbon sugar. Now notice that in this five carbon sugar, you have an oxygen in the second carbon. And that's why the other one was called deoxyribose, because it has one less oxygen. And that's why we call DNA deoxyribonucleic acid, because it has a sugar that has one less oxygen than the, the RNA. So deoxyribonucleic acid. Nucleic acid because of the nitrogenous base that you have over there. I know it seems confusing. You have a nitrogenous base and then you call it a nucleic acid. But that's because the phosphate group will make the molecule acid-like. All right? But basically, notice what the big difference between the RNA nucleotide and the DNA nucleotides is that they have an extra oxygen on the second carbon of the pentose sugar. Also, notice that the nitrogenous bases in RNA do not have thymine, but instead they have uracil replacing thymine. And we're going to talk about why that happens in a second as well. Okay? Now, let's talk about the two kinds of bases in DNA. You have the pyrimidines are single ring bases. All right? And then the purines are double ring bases. And you can tell the difference there. See? Pyrimidines, single ring, purines, double ring. Okay? Now, the way I remember this, actually, is that I think of pyrimidines, I will take of a pyramid. And I see the pyramid is only one ring, only one geometric shape. Now, if you look at purine, if you look at this thing and you put it to the side, it actually looks like a little dog. All right? It looks like a little dog. I think of it like this. It's got to look a little dog. It's like a tail and everything. And so, for me, this is the purine. Purine. Purinas and the, the purina the dogs eat. So that remember that it will have two rings because of that. And that will actually be useful in a second when I actually come up with a mnemonic for you to remember which one are purines and which one are the pyrimidines. Okay? So the pyrimidines are, are thymine and cytosine. And you see them here. Both are single ringed. All right? And so you have cytosine and you have thymine. Now, how do I remember that? Remember, pyrimidines are like pyramids. And where do you have pyramids? Well, you have pyramids in Cairo. Cairo. Egypt, Cairo, Egypt. Now, Cairo, Egypt starts with a C and ends with a T. So there you go. C for cytosine and T for thymine are my pyramidines because in Egypt you have, you have pyramids. So you, there you go. Cairo is the capital of Egypt. So this is one way to remember. At the same time, you also remember that pyramidines is just one ring. So that's how you remember. Now, adenine and guanine are, are your purines. So purines are going to be double ring. Remember, purina for the dog. And remember that it kind of looks like one. If you put it in the side like this, you will see that they have a kind of like a tail. And then you have like the lag. And then that's going to be a purina for the dog that it looks like. And it has two rings. And how do you remember that? Well, just remember a dog. A dog. And just like Cairo, Egypt, the first letter is an A. The last letter is G. So a dog, two, two rings. There you go. You remember. All right. So purina, a dog, purines. Got it? So that's how you remember the different kinds of bases you have. Now, putting it all together, you will notice that all the purines will have double rings. All the pyrimidines will have single rings. And also notice that the uh, adenine and thymine, they're represented in this picture, almost like there's a little hole here which can fit in the thymine. And remember the base pairing rules we talked about in the previous video, that A always fits with T and G always fits with C. They're trying to hint at that here. And we'll talk about that soon when we talk about char gas based pairing rules now notice that in rna the base thymine is replaced with uracil but barely any difference between the two of them notice that instead of having a methyl group corner here all you have is a hydrogen connected to the carbon so it's a simpler molecule and the only reason for that is that it makes it a little more stable remember that in rna you don't have a double strand and so this purina pure pyrimidine here uracil is going to be unpaired it's not going to be paired up with something else and so that that uracil become it's more stable like this if it's going to be unpaired and so that's why you have uracil instead of thymine and rna and we'll talk that about that on the next video when we do the review between dna versus rna okay now one interesting thing about comparing the two of them is that if you actually look at this and you see this is a nucleotide okay so a nucleotide will have a phosphate group a five carbon sugar and an endogenous space this is the nucleotide we just described Basic parts of the nucleotide. It has the phosphate group, the sugar, and the endogenous base. Remember, the bases are four types, and it depends whether or not RNA or, or DNA, if you're going to have T or U. All right? Uh, now, if I forget this is a nucleotide, come here, change this into ribose, so that the one that RNA has, add two more phosphate groups. What do you have there? Three phosphate groups, one 5-carbon sugar called ribose, and a nitrogenous base. What is this? 
you should recognize this from learning on, on cell respiration that this is ATP. Now, backtrack a little bit. Look at nucleotide. Look like this. Okay? The DNA nucleotide looks like this. Change the sugar into ribose. Add two more phosphate groups and you have ATP. So there's a very strong link between the ATP, which is the energy molecule of the cell, and the nucleotides, which are basically what the DNA is made of and what RNA is made of. This is going to be important later when we talk about pro, uh, DNA synthesis or replication, so make sure you pay attention to that. All right, so ATP is closely related to nucleic acids because its structure is very similar to that of adenine found in RNA. In fact, ATP stands for adenine triphosphate, which is basically just like the nucleotide of, of RNA, well, except for the two phosphate groups which are added for extra. So if you took those two phosphate groups away and you make something called AMP, which is adenine monophosphate, you basically have a nucleotide of RNA. There is a strong link between ATP and nucleic acids. Remember that. Okay? Now, these nucleotides will be strung together back to back in what is called a strand. Now, DNA is a long polymer, which will actually have a large, large amount of these things. Now, basically, what will happen is that the phosphate group of one nucleotide, no, notice why he phosphate group and then the base. Now, the sugar of one is always connected to the phosphorus of another. Check this out, all right? The sugar of one connects with the other, and again here, and again here, and again here. Those connections between the sugar and the phos phosphorus is called a phosphodiester bond. Diester is another way of saying sugar. And I remember that because when you go on a diet, you try to avoid sugar. Diet, diester, sounds the same. Phospho for phosphorus. So a phosphodiester bond is a, a bond between uh, sugar and the phosphorus. And together, this will form the backbone of the DNA molecule. Because look at this. This form basically uh, the latter DNA molecule together. And then you have these teeth, which are the nitrogenous base, which is going to be the teeth of the latter. All right? And basically, as you know, DNA will ha RNA will only have one of these strands. But DNA will actually have two of these strands. So the DNA is a very long polymer, and it's actually have a zipper shape of our twisted letter, just like that where you have two of those strands paired up together into a helical shape that spins around itself, as you see here. And I think of it as a, one of those spinning uh, stairwells where the backbone is made of phosphodiester bonds connecting the phosphorus and the sugars, and then the teeth of the latter are made of connections between nitrogenous bases. Okay? Now, double helix molecule is two coiled strands put together into one molecule, like I just said. Now, remember that the two strands fit together like a zipper. So that means the two strands you just saw are attached at the middle here. Each base, each teeth connects to the other teeth. How? Well, let's go back to learning about Chagas base pairing rules. Remember that adamine pairs with thymine and, with, and then cytosine pairs with guanine. He figured that out by looking at the chemistry of the composition of those molecules. But when you actually look at molecularly, you see there's always two bonds between adenine and thymine. And there's always three bonds between cytosine and guanine, okay? And you see those things there. Now, remember, three bonds between C and G, two bonds between A and T, okay? Um, what are those bonds? Hydrogen bonds. It is hydrogen bonds that attach to the, the, the teeth of the ladder across the middle. So that means the bonds between those middles are basically hydrogen bonds that happen between the very electron oxygen on one side and the nitrogen of another side. And you see those things happening there. In the case of, of uh, cysteine and guanine, there's going to have three of those bonds. In the case of adenine and thymine, you're going to have two of those bonds. But they are always bonded together to each other. Why? Because if you try to bind cytosine with adenine, they don't really jive. And another thing that's interesting, it's going to be important, that it's always a ring or, or purine molecule bonded to one ring, pyrimidine molecule. All right? Notice at that. Even on the other one we just did, it's always a two ring bonded to a one ring. Okay, and that's the, the pairing rules. Now, through this, these pairing rules, you end up with a double helix, where the legs of the ladder are the phosphate diester backbone, and the rungs of the ladder are the nitrogenous bases A, C, T, and G. Uh, and that's how you put the DNA molecule. And remember, it's going to be a helical shape that spins around itself. So, Nucleotides made of phosphate, sugar, and, and nitrogenous bases get together into strands, 
through the phosphodiester bonds to form a strand. Two of those strands connect laterally to hydrogen bonds and to form a twisting staircase DNA double helix.